this morning we are at Safe Light trying to get a couple of chips fixed in our windshield. So, we're so as you might be able to see behind me, we are at that interesting place that we discussed. We got our um, windshield all fixed up at Safe Light and we also went to our favorite restaurant El Pinto in Albuquerque with Brian and Cynthia which was absolutely fantastic as always and now we are on the road again. We are continuing our journey northwest up to Moab, Utah, and we are meeting up with our friend Danny, who, if you saw our Gettysburg video, he was with us in that, so we are excited to see him again. So as you guys can see, I'm driving, but I wanted to share, we had talked about doing like some abandoned places and really cool historical places as we continue sharing our travels with you guys. So this place that Brittany mentioned, checks all those boxes. It's really cool. sticker. Maybe, we're gonna see, because technically we could go in farther, but I wanna see what Danny wants to do. This is nuts. I mean, this is cool. Oh. Nice and warm in the van though. Good morning everybody. So, as you might be able to see behind me, we are at that interesting place that we discussed. We are at the Green River Launch Complex or the Athena Launch Complex, as it is known. <clears throat> this is a pretty cool location, but I got up uh, for the sunrise. It's uh, really beautiful out here. So let me take you around a little bit, show you guys the scenes where we are.
So the Green River Launch Complex, it was a sub-installation uh, during the Cold War era uh, of White Sands. So many of you are probably familiar with White Sands. But here, they did a good amount of launches. So between 1964 and 1975, there was over 200 launches here. So actually 244 to be exact. That's a good amount. Out of those 244 launches, 141 were Athena launches. So I'm not sure if you guys are familiar what, with what I'm when I say Athena, but that was actually the missile, the Athena missile. So 141 of those were just that. And then you had 60 Pershing and Pershing 1A launches, and they would launch those all the way up to 281 kilometers in the sky. So that's pretty incredible. And the original facility spanned almost 3,500 miles. So this was a very large facility. The area that we stayed at, this was actually the radar complex and then a storage facility over that way. So uh, we're good from any type of radiation or anything. <laughs> Most of the actual missiles that were launched here didn't contain them, uh, contain any, you know, like uranium or any of that. Uh, but the actual launch sites are farther that way, um, which we might go over and take a visit and see. If we can get over there, I will definitely take you guys along. But I just wanted to give you a brief history of this really cool, now abandoned uh, facility. So I'm gonna take a walk around though, show you guys some of the buildings here. Um, gone in this one right behind me already. Um, but I haven't explored because we got in and the sun was just going down, it got dark. So as you guys saw, we enjoyed a campfire, hung out with our friend Danny. Um, just posted up right here, both of us. Can't complain. Great night's sleep, quiet as can be. Highway's over this way, but it's probably about uh, three miles, four miles. So no highway noises, really good spot. You can find this on iOverlander. I have it as the Athena Launch Complex on there. This is now BLM land, we're not trespassing. This is open to the public. There's actually uh, one other person in a van staying farther down. He stopped and visited with us. Cool guy. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, you can come in. The road is paved. It's not been maintained in a long while. So it is a little bumpy, a little rough in a few spots. But to be honest, you could come in here in a Tesla. It's you just gotta take your time, drive around the uh, different potholes. So the site became in inactive in 1979 officially, and then was decommissioned in 1983, just four years later. Uh, the city of Green River, which this is technically where it is, is in Green River, Utah, about uh, 30 minutes, 45 minutes from Moab or so. I could be off, maybe a little bit longer. Um, <clears throat> but they actually for a while did lease some of the buildings here um, but then the US government, the military finally decommissioned this, this site and uh, it then was converted over to BLM land so Bureau of Land Management and open to the public so as I was telling you guys earlier you know over there is the actual like test site that way um, I don't know exactly how far it looks like it's about probably 10 10 miles or so, uh, that isn't part of this. So if you come here, you can't go over there. That's actually listed with the federal government as a hazardous waste site, obvious reasons, um, for some of the launches they did that actually did contain nuclear elements. Um, <clears throat> but that's separate, that's still a hazardous waste site, can't enter. Um, but like I said, all this, this is part of uh, just storage buildings, radar complex, things like that. Um, and these are the buildings that actually were leased out to Green River, uh, the city, uh, for their use for a while until the uh, federal government stepped in and, and of course listed it as BLM land here for people to come and just enjoy and look at the history. As you can see, some people have defaced it, which is sad, but over here, 
as you guys can see, a lot of people call this the new Area 51, the Utah Area 51, and the actual road coming in, it has a number like most BLM or forest roads do. But even on Google Maps, if you look at it, it's actually called the new Area 51 road. And uh, as you guys can see in the uh, night lapse, there are a lot of objects in the air. You can tell they're planes for the most part. Some of them you can't tell what they are. So I guess I can understand why people call it the new Area 51. Um, and it, you know, abandoned buildings, you're out here, you stay in the night. It does give it that creepy vibe, but we didn't experience anything, unfortunately. Maybe when I go back and review the uh, night lapse, maybe we'll see something really cool. Um, but what I could see last night was just a lot of planes in the sky. You know, Salt Lake, is that way not too far so a lot of planes going off and going to their destination Brittany decided to join us as the sun was coming up nice and bright behind us here. <laughs> we're gonna enjoy this for a few minutes then make some coffee and then go explore some other buildings hopefully we're gonna do that in the van because uh, this goes a a good good distance yeah. until I told you guys this was a 3,500 acre facility obviously there's the hazardous zone that's still closed off to the public as I told you uh, but there is a lot to still explore so as you guys know Brittany is a coffee connoisseur <laughs> so we got all our, to be. our stuff for our pour overs here and we actually uh, get our coffee I don't know if we ever shared this but um the morning movement so it's the morning movement, uh, nomadic movement on YouTube. Um, then they have their socials of, for the morning movement, uh, but they're YouTubers. They were the ones we were hoping to visit their grand opening when we were in Vermont, but unfortunately it got postponed because of construction, which is understandable. Mm -hmm. But I actually just wanted to show you guys how we uh, store everything, because you guys might be interested. It's kind of like a decent amount of stuff. Yeah. So <laughs> let me show you. So we have this larger drawer here, so we keep a toaster in here, and then all our coffee stuff fits around there. And then uh, we do have more bags of coffee, which are in this drawer. We have a couple. So this is their sweet cream right here. And then uh, this morning we're drinking their blueberry crisp. Which does not exist anymore. So. Because they only make small batches of coffee, so once they sell out, unfortunately you're not getting it again, which kind of makes it a little more special when you drink your coffee in the morning. Yeah, so they work with uh, local farmers down in uh, Central South America. Um, actually, I think they're based out of Panama. Panama. Uh, so they work with local farmers, like f family ran little far coffee farms, and as Brittany said, it's all small batch. So sometimes they have a release once a year because they only get a certain amount of beans. Uh, or it's like a once in a lifetime thing <laughs> or they may bring it back in a few years um, but so far blueberry crisp is amazing all their coffees are pretty amazing and then the uh, new sweet cream one's pretty good so we're gonna finish making this uh, coffee probably a little oatmeal uh, or something for breakfast and then we'll uh, get exploring so we're kind of kicking ourselves in the butt now for not driving up here last night like we said, it was dark. We thought we found a really cool spot. But right here, we are on like top of the world. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's just straight cliff right here. And then actually down here, I can tell by looking at it, definitely where they tested some stuff. Um, you can tell by the ground here. Makes sense actually why this over here was like the radar complex and things like that, because it's up higher. And then down here is all the testing area. And you can see there's a road that actually goes back there and cuts through. And I can see a building in the distance way back over here. So I think that's actually the, uh, the actual testing area down there, kind of in the valley. Really cool. And there is a really large structure um, way back here on the mountain. You guys probably can't see it, but it's a pretty interesting spot for sure. So here we have another interesting building. This is kind of like a drive-through... Uh, Looks like it's got heaters, things like that. So I don't know if this was like a mechanic shop or if this was actually like uh, essentially a car wash, an area for them to wash 
some of the materials because it does have drains in the floor. It does look like it has a water line over here coming out over. So not exactly sure. And of course, you know, all signage, everything has been removed. But uh, pretty interesting place. Um, you know, only a few outbuildings. They've started demolishing some. Um, people have came in and scrapped, unfortunately, and stole a lot of stuff. But really interesting place for sure. But uh, I think uh, the short history lesson, the tours are done. Sorry, it wasn't many structures we tried, but just not many left here. Um, but a really cool spot if you're traveling through from like Moab to Salt Lake. I'd suggest finding an eye overlander and swinging through, staying the night. It's really cool. It's got a good vibe to it. Beautiful scenery. But we are on our way now to Las Vegas. We're going to go stay there. Probably make a video there, of course, because we are staying at a really cool hotel. Not our usual thing, but we have to use our reward points from American Express. So we get a free room, free breakfast, free food, etc. So we will catch you guys in Vegas. If you guys enjoyed this video, please remember to give us a big thumbs up. Drop a comment below if you have any really cool BLM spots out west or, or somewhere. Uh, specifically, like if you guys know any cool abandoned places out yeah. west. So we're talking like Northern California, Oregon, Washington, those areas. Um, kind of giving you a hint right there where we're headed. Uh, we want to explore some more abandoned stuff or some really cool just spots to camp out in the forest and get some good scenery. So drop a comment and please let us know. And please consider subscribing to our channel if you haven't already. We'll see you guys in Vegas. We'll see you next time, guys. About to leave Already packing Come with me I'm not really asking We'll get away To a place where we don't know About to see